to go back for it. Uh, today, I would like to uh, uh, shift the uh, gears a little bit and talk more specifically about computer science than about mathematics. Um, uh, but first, are there questions on uh, the homework assignment that I should get out of the way? First, everybody understands it fully, well enough to come to the TA office hours this afternoon if, if you don't, right? Okay, good. Uh, so computer science uh, um, is is the you know the name of the department that's teaching this course is CS 209 and uh, it's called mathematical writing just because we don't we didn't really have a an adjective in English saying computer scientifical writing uh, or whatever the right word should be. Um, uh, maybe there never will be a word. <laughs> For it, uh, but uh, you know, computer science is a big mouthful. But we have, but uh, informatic writing, informatical writing, would that be the proper, the proper European term? I don't know. Um, uh, well, it's uh, in 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 other fields that use mathematics that aren't specifically uh, uh, doing doing central mathematics. Uh, you still have all of the all of the problems that arise in mathematical exposition, but you also have, have other ones. And, uh, and it turns out that, for example, a, te a, a, a typist, a technical typist who has to work for the computer science department has to know everything that a typist in the math department has to know, but a lot more, about, because there's algorithms involved. I mean, I, this sounds chauvinistic to say this, but, I, but uh, I, I, I've been involved in hiring typists since, I mean, you know, it's just, uh, it, and, and so I, I want to try to uh, explain some of the um, uh, s some of the things that that make computer science uh, an extra add-on complexity um, to the problem, and then see how uh, discuss some of the answers that that are um, that, that are showing up and so on. Uh, so I brought a bunch of stuff with me, and I'm not sure I can find all the right all the right materials in time. Unfortunately, I didn't give myself enough time to. To, to locate everything, the, my first example was going to be based on on Polish mathema mathematics, uh, um, and uh, this took, and and uh, I had remembered something incorrectly. See, see, your your homework problem is is uh, is based on a you know a paper in a Polish mathematics journal, so I thought this would be a nice continuity because I published also in a Polish mathematics journal, and I and I included algorithms in my paper, and so I was going to show you the the way they screwed up when they tried to typeset my paper and the algorithms came on looking terrible. Well, I found out as I was looking through the files just before class that uh, they didn't do such a bad job after all. Uh, <laughs> so I had to had to go to some more files to get to, to get the uh, proper examples. It turned out um, that when I wrote when I wrote a letter to this is a journal called Acta Arithmetica and it's and uh, this letter was dated 77 and and I, I did write a a letter to them saying, uh, just describing the fact that I'm using floor and ceiling functions that um, uh, that uh, they didn't have in their journal, and so I was making an argument for them to do that. Uh, but the but the uh, so the so in the paper in the proofs that I got, I had to uh, I had to tell them where to uh, where to lop off the corners of these of these symbols, and this is all hand set in metal type and so on. This is uh, you can see it's. Polish, and, um, and uh, uh, but then when I got to the algorithms where I thought I was where I thought I was going to find uh, that they had a, they had great problems, I, it, it turned out I had, I had in, anticipated the pro oops I had anticipated the problems earlier when I sent it in, and so I marked the, marked my manuscript up very carefully so that they wouldn't get that that you know they would they would uh, have that working out pretty well although there is some indentation in the number six was missing here and so on these are the galley proofs but uh, but they didn't but this uh, came out reasonably um, reasonably the way I, I wanted um, and and uh, the mod operator here um, which should be in Roman type they didn't you know they just made it as one long identifier k mod h but other you know and um, but otherwise it it, uh, it it and and the, the most common mistake that a printer typically makes when you send them something and don't mark it up carefully is this colon equal sign. Now uh, they'll love, love to put the colon far to the left and then a space and then the equal sign. 
But so this wasn't the example that I wanted that I that I was expecting it to be. Now, these conventions for typesetting algo like languages were developed by the ACM. Myrtle Kellington was the executive editor of ACM publications through the 60s and and spent a lot of time developing standards as to for indentation and boldface italic. When you go into Roman, like a comments will be in Roman. Identifiers will be in italic, except the the you know a numeral will still be Roman. Sigma two and and uh, she worked out putting the colon and equal sign together and so on. When algo was defined, there was no thought given to these questions of how to actually typeset it. Um, and uh, but Myrtle was in, in on it from the very beginning of publishing the report and worked on it together with Peter Nauer in order to get something that um, that looked that looked well. So when algo sixty was published in 1960, it um, uh, had a nice looking uh, report. And it was due to this uh, this special work, uh, and it can only be appreciated by by knowing how many things that was different from what the typesetters uh, were doing other otherwise. Now I think I do have an example in the other in the other folder here. Question? Yes. Are you going to discuss like? Uh, could you give a reference for that or, or to which now? For the uh, business about why it's boldface, why the. Uh, Oh yeah. Now I don't believe she's ever published her her uh, uh, she, you know her pale, her pages of style rules for for setting algo type. She just you know they she uh, uh, gave it to the people at Waverly Press and and other other journals that want to publish uh, algo like languages have written to ACM and gotten it from their headquarters. But I don't think it's ever appeared in print. These these style rules. Maybe that's not the question you're asking now. Well, I'm wondering. Yeah. Basically, I thought it was wonderful why, uh, why people want the, uh, the predefined words like it and perceive as only boldface, and you know, the other things are supposed to be yeah. not boldface and so on. I was wondering if you were going to discuss that. Okay, well, um, it's something that uh, uh, that Uh, reads seems to read better if the, if if there's a way to distinct if there's a way for them to be uh, uh, to be typographically different. Now I haven't seen all the different possible experiments that went into it, but the, but the, uh, um, the having the uh, uh, okay. Let me. I, I guess I should say something about the there. If you look at the old publications uh, before Algol, what the, what what algorithms looked like, I think. That would probably be the best, the best uh, answer. But the, the hardest thing, the the, the um, uh, let me see. Uh, Fortran was all caps, and and uh, they would typeset all caps, um, and the and caps on the typefaces were not made to look good when they were in, used in such and mixed with uh, with numbers and th and uh, parentheses and, and things like this, and and have a long pieces of text in all caps, and they. And uh, not not having a fixed width font was was uh, uh, a, a loss because in Fortran you needed to know what was in column five and of the card and for a comment uh, and and uh, or was it column six or four I forget and when you punched the cards anyway people would uh, there were a lot of pub of, of papers published that used um, uh, that 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 needed. A fixed width font in order to make it make sense, and and the programming the programs always looked 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 pretty awful if you just had them all caps and things like that. Now the that was the environment before Algol, and um, uh, with Algol they decided that this there was a concept of reserved words, and so these words begin, procedure, so on were were um, to be different from the identifier begin and procedure, which were which were legal identifiers if you look at the original definition of Algol. Um, and therefore, the original implementations of Algol required a, you wouldn't just say B-E-G-I-N in your program, but you would say, uh, I think it was like at sign B-E-G-I-N in order to, to, to mean this is the re reserved word B-E-G-I-N as opposed to the identifier B-E-G-I-N, which you're also allowed to use. Uh, so you were supposed to have some some way of and 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 the, and the compiler was supposed to treat this as if it was a single a single letter, 
each reserved word was in the definition of algol, strictly speaking, a, a uh, uh, equivalent to the letter A or B or something like that. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, uh, a letter of the, uh, of the terminal alphabet, terminal symbol alphabet for the language. Um, and uh, it wasn't until, uh, until a couple, you know, some years went by before people realized that they, they would be much better to, to reserve the reserved words and not allow them as identifiers. But, there was, but in Fortran, uh, uh, there were, there's no such thing as a reserved word. I mean, you can have a variable called do5i, and do5i equals 3 is different from do5i equals 3 comma n because uh, the latter is a do statement. The first one is an assignment to the variable do5i. And um, so, so uh, these, these conventions for, for, for actually delimiting uh, uh, or, and, and, and separating out the functions of things uh, uh, developed about, uh, about then, and I think it, it's turned out to be a, uh, a, uh, a useful key, a, a useful way. That, and even though you're, you're using three different, you're using bold, Roman, and italic, uh, they seem to mix in a, in a, in a way that, uh, that psychologically uh, blends with, the, with our understanding of the reading. So. So I, I don't know. Uh, now let me see if I can find the one in the, the, the example of a, of, a, of a typesetter who hadn't gotten the um, who hadn't done computer science before. Um, hope I, oh, I'm not sure this is the right. Yeah, yeah. This one, oh my man, this one's really awful. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, and this turned out. This is, in fact, is the American Mathematical Monthly. Uh, the uh, and and uh, so surprisingly, they, this, these are galley proofs from the Math Monthly in uh, 1984. So so uh, actually fairly fairly recent. Here I'm I'm um, describing a, a a using an algo like language where I'm describing some of uh, Eric Bishop's constructive mathematics, uh, which is a um, uh, a book that he that that writes uh, where he where uh, every um, um, every proof in it is really an algorithm, and uh, but his algorithms go way beyond the normal data structures of computer science. And I tried to put it into a computer science. I tried to put his his uh, mathematical language into computer science uh, notation from one of the one of the pages. Um, I guess I tell you what this this article is. It's called. Um, Algorithmic thinking and mathematical thinking, and it's um, it's trying to uh, uh, to analyze what what it is that that mathematicians do, and is it different from what computer scientists do? And I and I took a sample of of, a, of books, and I looked at page 100 on each book, and I and then I tried to boil down what what would what what, um, what things would an AI program to do mathematical reasoning have to have to learn in order to be able to handle page 100 on these various books and uh, and uh, and one of the books I chose was uh, was a constructive was a book of constructive mathematics, assuming that maybe there would be some difference between that and and uh, the other and uh, the mathematics written by um, other other people. Well, now so I try to do this in a computer. So here you see one, you know, one of the first things that typesetter doesn't know to put a, to put the colons next to the equal sign. Here they used a very funny symbol I had never seen before, with that a, a, um, a little t t tiny little dots after the equal sign, uh, completely wrong. Uh, but they, they uh, maybe were trying to get something on this, and then. Uh, um, lemma five here you see is in Roman here it's in italic it's got to be consistent between the two and uh, when I got to um, um, and, then, and then when I got well yeah when I got to this one I, they, it really started to break their system I mean look at these lines all smashed into each other uh, this is a is that an upside down question mark? I don't know. Everything is all screwed up. So, so now when you finally see the, the article in print, um, it might look look like it was simple, but the actual formatting of this uh, uh, was was sufficiently different from what these people who do mathematics every day uh, normally do. That they that they uh, they just uh, uh, was sort of terrified by this. But I was talking about the different data structures. Now you see here's a data structure where the variable is a is a function that takes uh, that takes one parameter times itself into the positive reals, and uh, so that's a data type where, or for a local variable of this procedure, and uh, 
uh, people who were in my 304 class last year, where we talked about the um, uh, where we talked about complicated data types, who will recognize some of this as as uh, uh, I mean, this type lambda calculus is now becoming an important research topic. But anyway, the, I'm talking here about the, the the method of presentation, just to, just to illustrate that um, that there is some there's a style rules things that go into these that are that are uh, fairly extensive and not not uh, the same as ordinary mathematics. So this is this is one add-on to to mathematics. Now another another thing I, I alluded to that that computer science seemed to need that mathematics didn't have was the idea of a, of a style of type with fixed width. Uh, we we uh, refer to strings of characters and we refer to things in uh, it, that that uh, person types in a on a on a terminal and these appear on a on a screen uh, usually in a in a font that has fixed pitch so that you so that things will line up uh, uh, below each other on on um, on adjacent lines. Now, um, so when I when I came to publish the volume one of the Art of Computer Programming, the the um, publishers said it was going to be impossible to have to to have uh, a fixed a fixed width type. Um, I should I would have to use variable width because they 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 were doing it with a monotype uh, and monotype had room for 256 characters and they had to be a certain thing and they they were already had bold and italic and Roman how are they going to get another style in there too? Um, but I was very uh, 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 insistent that it was going to be important to have something like this and and so uh, the people at S and Wesley were, went down to the shop and. And finally, they worked out a system where the guy said, yes, we can figure out how we can throw out some of these Greek letters you aren't using very much as often, and we'll put those in by hand, and, and we'll, put in a, we'll put in a fixed type. And they found a, a nice um, uh, style of type that would, that would blend with the, um, with the other um, with the other, uh, with the other things well, I think. This, was the, this is the original monotype thing that they, where they mix this typewriter style uh, with um, with italic here and with um, with Roman and and uh, and then there's bold also here uh, and the one change I had to make was that we had to have a we had to be able to tell the difference between O and zero and uh, that was and so though this O here was specially designed for my book uh, to be to be very square uh, to distinguish it from the uh, zero which uh, must appear somewhere nearby here. Here's a zero down at the bottom here. So the O was made was made specially for the for this book in the 60s, uh, and then they figured out a way to actually put the uh, to put these these things. I was using words like contents and so on um, uh, in a technical sense where I wanted it where I, where I wanted something to be typographically different. The most important thing was I was de I was defining an assembler assembler language where the where the um, the fields were important as to where things appeared in the in columns and so on. So fixed width was important at that time. Um, that still seems to be uh, tr true today. That is, a comp uh, uh, when you write a, a manual about computer programs, um, the, it's quite often the case that uh, you'll want to have the examples that reflect something that the computer that you type into the computer or that the computer shows on a screen or something like that you'll want that in a specific type that will that will be a fixed pitch and will 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 be specific so so uh, this was now now we we intentionally in the 60s we were we we, we confronted this and said uh, does you know computer science is a is a you know the first computer science departments have just been established is there any are there any uh, um, Things that make it different from what, uh, what what other journals are doing, computer science journals that that ought to be uh, that ought to be uh, thought out and, and experimented with, and we we faced this uh, consciously in those times, and and uh, and the typographers uh, came up with these solutions, and and uh, they they're now still with us, I guess. Um, okay, and let's see. Uh, I I had several things I wanted to bring up today, and I'll probably come out and peculiar order, but the presentation of algorithms is one of the main is one of the main things, of course, that distinguishes computer science from other things. We have to describe how we present a method. And uh, so, um, I uh, um, 
was writing this series of books that I knew was going to take me many years to finish. And the question was, how was I going to present the algorithms in this book, in these books? And um, I knew I wanted to have one level that was that was very low level, so that the uh, that, so that the the ideas about going from a low level machine level up to the uh, up to higher level would be clear. But what should I use for the high level language? Um, uh, programming languages in the 60s were in a terrible state of flux, uh, and uh, still they are. I mean, we still don't have the everybody's favorite programming language uh, hasn't 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 come along. And so I knew that whatever, if I took a particular programming language, it would, it would soon, it, I would, it, I would alienate 70% uh, of the people who are going to read the book, um, and the, and uh, and even in the others, they would probably not have that language implemented on their machine, and so they would think uh, uh, they shouldn't buy the book. So I wanted them to buy the book. I wanted everybody to buy the book. So. Um, so I decided not to use a programming language, but to use English instead. And um, uh, I'm going to discuss the pros and cons of this. But uh, later on, then uh, Jeff Allman and uh, Alejo Hopcroft just came up with uh, their, their book, which, which covered many of the similar topics. And they decided to use Pigeon Algol in their, in their book. Which, were, which worked successfully. It was, uh, it was not, it was, it was uh, sufficiently different from Algol. Nobody would ever try to actually type these programs in and run them. But it was still uh, expository. It, by that time, people were used enough to that to that kind of language that they could that they they felt it was reasonably readable. Um, still, um, I've gotten many letters from people saying that they. They appreciate the the way that I give algorithms in English because then they actually read them. They, they it looks like they're, they're it's something to read, and so they read them. They get caught, you know. They don't realize it's going to be, but they but they actually do read them. And so they said that was a good idea. And so so I get this. Uh, so the, the the style I decided to use in these books was based on something that I had actually seen in the Russian literature uh, in the 50s, the uh, where they. Uh, an algorithm was was given schematically with a ver with a with a flowchart that had very very little detail in in um, uh, in the steps, but it gave a picture of what was going on. But uh, the idea was that you had one or two keywords in a, uh, maybe three in this case. Here's one, three, uh, which would describe uh, the purpose of that step and. Um, and if you understood the algorithm, this would be a helpful flowchart. It wouldn't be good enough by, by itself. But then, so I so I kept these keywords in the step at the beginning of the step, and I and uh, the keywords end with a per with a question mark if it's a if, if there's a sort of a test going on and a period otherwise. And I tried to find these two words that would boil down the whole idea of the step. And then um, uh, later on, I. Uh, this would also make a reasonable comment to put in, a, in an assembly language program, E1, find remainder. Um, and so then, so I decided for present, presenting an algorithm, I would use something pre like presenting a theorem. It ended with this with this black symbol that I also use at the end of a theorem. Um, <clears throat> and I give a title to it, like I give theorem A, I would have algorithm E. And uh, I would give a description at the beginning, the way a theorem has a description of what's going on. Um, in in the um, uh, in the algorithm, I'm give, I'm just talking English here, so I'm not I'm not making assignment statements or anything. Although I well assignment statement, I guess so. I have this left arrow operation, which which I which isn't exactly English, but um, needed that. That's something that computer science has that mathematics doesn't have. Um, and uh, in, then there's parenthetical remarks that that state state things about the algorithm that turn out to be useful, uh, but not you know, I mean useful to understand it. And and uh, as I learned more in the years went by, I learned more about the um, invariant, the idea of invariance. And so the com the comments on my on uh, the algorithms I wrote after 1968 or something like that would would be. Consciously done with the idea that this was that the things I'm putting in parentheses are often the invariants that a person would would use in a formal proof of the correctness of the algorithm. So anyway, now this this was the style of of, present, of presenting algorithms that I used in the book, and I'm going to continue to use it. On the other hand, I can't consider it to be a success because um, of the following thing: people have tried to copy it, 
Uh, and you might say that's a mark of success. But the fact is that none of the copies that I've seen do it do it well. At least I, I don't like the way they've done. They, they, they copied the style and they said and, and unfortunately they say now I'm going to present an algorithm in Knuth style and then they pre pre proceed to botch my style completely. I mean, they, all of the all of the things of it that I consider important, they they um, uh, chain. And uh, so the fact is, then it must be a personal style that only works for me. Uh, so so you should find one that works for you. But uh, but don't say that it's mine then. <laughs> and so, um, <clears throat> Okay, but but uh, in more recent papers, I have been when I you know in, in my books I've adopted this style, the book of Art of Computer Programming. This is a, a project I started in 1962, and uh, you know maybe 20 years from now I'll I'll finish it. So it's a long ongoing thing. I can't just up and change the style every every so often. Um, uh, but the uh, uh, the but in the most more recent papers that I'm writing. Um, I'll be using a style that's much that's where I'll, as, I, as I showed you, I, I had algo like you know algo like languages here in my in the paper, and I and I'm in fact this is this is very close to algo except every once in a while it uses uh, 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 well I'm not sure this divide operation every one, every once in a while if I you know mod maybe wasn't in algo specifically but for but um, but uh, Pascal has it, but Pascal's mod is is flaky. Uh, so uh, anyway, I, I'm still using an algo like style in this in this in this article, and intended to do that as uh, depending on the the class of readers that I that I uh, assume. <clears throat> okay. Now um, I've got a handout which uh, for what I want, would like to talk about on. Wednesday at some length, possibly also will carry over to Friday. Can we pass these out to Tracy? Okay. Uh, actually, we got a whole bunch here. Why not overdo it? And the handout is based on um, is based on uh, an idea that I that I've been trying to push called literate programming. And then uh, this uh, this was an article then that uh, that John Bentley wrote in the communications of the ACM. This was May 686, um, where he uh, did me the great favor of popularizing my ideas in in one of the best American journals of I mean for for having a lot of readers. Of, um, and uh, this is called programming. Yes, yes, yes. Guest oyster. This is called programming pearls, and he called and he he, he, called, he said it was a special guest oyster. Um, it, uh, John is a is a uh, a, a good writer. <laughs> now, I'll tell you so, um, now now I hope you read this in between today's class and Wednesday. I'm not going to read it to you now, but the but uh, I I did write uh, this article before in the computer journal. And um, and I got a a note from John Bentley saying, "Why did I publish this in the Computer Journal? Because Americans ought to read this, and they never read the Computer Journal. This is the British, the British Computer Journal, British Computer Society Journal." And I said, "John, I I wrote it in the British Computer Journal because I thought Americans were illiterate and they would never care about this sort of thing. Um, uh, it was only people in Britain that know anything about writing. And uh, in fact, I waited until until I." Uh, um, until I had a trip to England, until I was going to England for, I guess that's a trip to Wales that I mentioned uh, last week. Um, when I was going to the uh, British Isles, the um, I saved up. The, that was the time when I when I when I gave the talk, launching this this idea. And so in London, I gave the I gave a talk in t to the British Computer Society called Literate Programming, and I I think that this is one of the Biggest ideas to come out of my work on tech, actually. Uh, so, uh, so I'm, I'm rather proud of this. If you don't like it, uh, try to conceal that fact from me, because uh, I'm, you know, I, you see, I'm tickled pink with the idea. But, but uh, the, the, um, I found that uh, that uh, as I was as I was um, facing the problem of how to explain the tech program to a wider audience. That that this this forced me to think about pre presenting a program in a different way than I'd ever done before, and the way that, that I finally started writing it when I did the second draft of, t of tech was 
was for me a, a radical change in the way I write programs, and it, I don't. And uh, for me, it's I, I had finally discovered the right way to write programs after after 25 years, and and uh, I wanted to go back and rewrite every program I'd ever done in this new style. And I was really um, I was really in, uh, you know. Uh, Thrilled with the way things were working, something something clicked. It was it was a, a bunch of old ideas that that when you put together in this package, all of a sudden, uh, they all worked very well for me. And so I got excited about it, and I and I decided to have a nice buzzword to go with it called literate programming, which would then be my way of having revenge on the people who had been talking about structured programming for many years, and and thereby making me feel guilty by. Whenever I wrote an unstructured program, now I could make them feel even guiltier if they wrote an illiterate program. And uh, so I, so I was, I had this all figured out. And then I decided to launch it in England because there I thought that I was getting people who really, who really could write better. Now I'm, I'm, um, of course I was joking when I said that, but there is a little grain of truth in this, and it, namely, as a, as an editor of of computer journals, I've. Uh, Found that if I take a, a a random journal written by a r random journal article written by uh, um, someone in um, Britain that has now been submitted for publication, uh, chances are very good that it's well written. And if I take a random journal article that's submitted for publication from America, chances are very poor that it's well written. And I don't think it's only the genes that control this. There's something about there's something else, and it's some, it must be uh, something in the educational system or whatever. And that's why I uh, did decide really to to talk about literate programming first in the British Computer Journal and and then and to the British Computer Society. Um, on the other hand, I was glad to see that John Bentley liked it, and he said he would like to popularize the idea and uh, let Americans know about it. And so he wrote this this column which I'm handing out now because I want to talk about literate programming more on uh, Wednesday and Friday. Please read it between now and then. It's, uh, so he first just introduces it, and then uh, at the end um, he has uh, the, the last piece is the program itself. The last page is the program. is is, is a short example of, a, of what I hope is a literate pro program. I wrote it in, in two or three hours, but it's still um, uh, an example. That, that uh, that he liked well enough to print. So um, that's that's the the intro on on it. Now, what is the idea? What is the basic idea, though, besides this bu buzzword of literate programming? And the main the main idea is that um, that combining that. Okay, the main idea is to is to treat a computer program as a piece of literature. To to uh, imagine the day when there will be a Pulitzer Prize given for the best computer program of the year. That uh, that uh, when you when you and and when you when you write a program, you should think of it uh, of yourself as an expositor for human readers, not as an instructor of this of a of, a, of an inanimate computer. Uh, this this helps greatly, in fact, in in making the program better, uh, even for the computer's sake, um, because you get it right. Uh, much faster. Uh, every teacher knows that they, when, when presenting an algorithm to a class and trying to think of how you, how you, uh, uh, what the steps are as you're at the blackboard or something talking to students, um, you get much more clarity than if you're sitting there at a, and hacking away and just and, and just tossing together some statements and then you let the computer play around with them for a while. And if you are doing a one-off program, you. you you usually go through many drafts of it uh, if you do the second way, but if you if but the ones that uh, present to somebody else when you're explaining, actually thinking of explaining it to another human being as you're writing it, you tend to get it right the first time. Um, and uh, now, if you think of uh, so you so I think of uh, of uh, of myself instead as a programmer essayist at the same. At the, at the same time, I'm trying to uh, trying to explain what it does, and this makes my program better. And I tried to explain in this paper some of the ways in which that that happens. And then, but then there's a method of uh, of uh, of actually of actually doing it, and that is to uh, organize a large program as um, in in modules. And everyone knows that uh, the best way to uh, to, to uh, understand c complexity is to understand the simple parts of it and to understand the simple ways in which the parts go together and then you can understand the, com the complex whole and so you break down a complex program into parts and then you the idea is to explain each part 
by itself and to explain how, you, how the parts relate to each other and then you've got uh, your program. Um, and uh, for this, uh, I, d I remembered the trick about technical writing that I told you about earlier, that is that I try to explain things twice, once formally and once informally. Uh, and so that's the style that I decided to freeze into this, uh, to this uh, uh, method of programming where I would start with an informal description. So every, every module begins with, with text um, and ends with Pascal, uh, ends with, with formal pro computer program, but begins with informal text. And these are co complementary to each other just in the way that, uh, that when you're writing a, a paper in mathematics that I said earlier, you you give a formula and you say the, the non-increasing vectors and then you say that these are vectors. Uh, then you give the formal definition of what those vectors are. Um, so I froze that into, the, uh, into a style of, of writing computer programs where, where a person uh, sits at a terminal and what, well actually you compose this thing. I, I show you the way it looks on your terminal. Uh, it looks like this. And so I have a special control symbol that says I'm beginning a new section and I start typing away here giving the, the informal comments and then I get to another this, this special symbol again coming in here followed by a less than sign which is going to mean here's going to be the name of the, uh, the name of that module and the name of the module is called program to print um, okay take a look at it here now it's called program to print the first thousand prime numbers two this two means it's module number two and um, in module number one uh, the, the code was the program to print the first thousand prime numbers too. The, the, this, this number at the end of the module name always tells where to look for the module, like variable program four is, is module number four, et cetera. Other constants of the program five. So the, now inside module two, I have a program here, program to print the first thousand prime numbers, and it's given here completely, but this, this also involves other references to, to a code that goes somewhere else that I haven't written yet, haven't explained yet. This is 543. I'm going to get to them when, I, when it's timed in the exposition, in, in, when, when a person reading the program uh, would be interested in knowing about the details. But I don't declare everything first the way a compiler needs to know when it reads it. I'm declaring things in the order in which a human being wants to read it. And um, so this is um, the idea of the of the uh, programming system, which is which is uh, called Web. I guess I told you that we chose Web after a bunch of other names were considered, but based on Roger's thesaurus. Uh, trying to think, and 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 uh, was one of the few um, three-letter words that hadn't been used yet before for a computer system name that I could could find. Um, and uh, web sounds a little spidery and uh, and so on at first, and, but uh, it also uh, has some nice aspects, and we got to like the name the name web. In fact, I went to Germany uh, shortly after this trip to England, and and I found out that Webe was the word for for weaving, and uh, the Latin word for weaving is texa. And so everything was coming together. And uh, where I going? Now, so uh, now at the computer terminal, I sit and type something that looks like this. And uh, once I and, and the name of a section tends to be rather long, and so I allow uh, in, I allow it to abbreviate it uh, in the file. And um, and uh, the uh, uh, the uh, computer figures out that that this was actually programmed to print the first thousand prime numbers because that that longer identifier had already appeared earlier up here. See. Um, so, the, so these three dots are actually there. I actually typed those three dots. These three dots I didn't. Uh, these three dots are, are, are an ellipsis that, that indicate uh, what it would look like. So then, then uh, I have this, uh, I have this uh, computer file written in, written in this style where I alternate between ex, uh, informal and formal. And then I have, so that's called a web file. I have two programs that read web files. One of them is called Weave. Which, uh, which converts the web file to a tech file, and tech will print, will, will print the output, and this actually was printed by tech. This, this uh, is the output of, of weave. You know, so so you, you take the web file, you weave it, and, you, and then you tech it, and, that, that, and, you get, and, and this is what, what you get in output. Um, the other, but there's another branch, and that is you, you run the Tangle program on the web file, and that produces a Pascal program. The Pascal compiler can compile that and run it. And, uh, now uh, that's another uh, another important issue I think about computer programs. If you're ever going to publish computer programs, 
that are supposedly running computer programs, this has to be the computer has to be in charge of the typesetting. There's just too many things that can go wrong between uh, uh, between trying trying to get to get every everything to be uh, properly transmitted be, uh, if, if, between a actual computer file and somebody going through and typesetting it by hand and and typing it what they what they think is a computer program. Uh, see, I I don't unfortunately I didn't save the galleys from this programming pearls article, but this was very amply demonstrated on this on this sample program at the end here. This was typeset this was typeset by the uh, uh, Waverly Press, um, and uh, a tremendous number of errors were on the galley proofs, and I caught most of them, and John caught some that I didn't catch, and and uh, we and we just it, it was absolutely clear that this method of of of, com of publishing programs would not work if it required another human being in the in the uh, in the in, in the pipeline uh, in the whatever you call it the uh, loop. Um, between between the computer program and the printing press, but it, but there has to but it has to be a, a, a computer control going from the from the uh, source to the to the uh, to the typesetting in order to get it right. Um, uh, there's just there's just so many chances for errors otherwise, and that and that's what uh, Weave does. Weave Weave includes the formatting that uh, that will uh, that will insert indentations and and uh, boldface and italics and, and so on according to these conventions of Myrtle Kellington and um, other formerly conventions people like that they can also adopt and they could build such systems too. this this uh, this uh, whole idea doesn't depend on tech and Pascal you could substitute for tech any typesetting language you could substitute for Pascal any um, programming language and and uh, people are uh, had developing things like this with Lisp, for example, as a programming language, and there's TROF and C versions that uh, uh, that, uh, were, that that have been developed, and so on. Um, the uh, the only problem is, I guess, somebody has also actually tried to use Tech and Tech uh, to use this system for for writing Tech macros, and then we had a little problem as to what to name these files because they both had the same name. The, both were named tech file. Um, but but uh, that was the only uh, case. Now, well, <clears throat> now, so this is uh, an idea that seems to be working reasonably well now um, in the, at least the, uh, the the second last issue of the communications. This uh, um, I think it's the September 87 issue now has has a, a new column called literate programming or something, which is scheduled to appear three times a year. Which is uh, which is uh, based on the reaction to this article that uh, that Bentley wrote. His he, he said that there was more more mail um, produced by this uh, by the by this article than anything else that uh, uh, that they can remember at the communications, and so it 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 it, uh, re it touched a nerve of some sort anyway that people were looking for better ways to communicate uh, computer programs. Um, now, I exp what I want to talk about the rest of this week is the experiments that I did earlier this year with, uh, with, with nine undergraduates who were working with me on a research project, and I asked them to, to write some programs in the web system and see what, and to see, see what they went through learning it, because it, uh, I, never ha I had only, only done it myself using it. You know, my own experience was, was uh, uh, too personal. I couldn't separate myself from it, and if it was anything about this, System I didn't like, I could easily change it. And, uh, but somebody else gets it, and they and they might have to fight the system because because they, they don't have the freedom to change it when they want to. And so I so I um, I want to show you some of the experiments that that um, uh, that went on there. The, the 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 first and second drafts of the of the programs that the students wrote. That's why. I would, but I'd like you to prepare yourself for that by reading by reading this article. Uh, the last few minutes today. I want to say just a couple of things about um, computer uh, user manuals. Now, <clears throat> we'll say more about it later because everyone knows this is a, a blight on the industry. Uh, uh, the, I talked to Lyle Nelson of the communications department, and, and he says, oh, he's so glad you're, you have a, 
a course on writing in computer science department because the computer manuals I've been reading are so terrible and and uh, and in fact uh, it's really it's really scandalous uh, the way uh, the way uh, manuals um, come out now um, and I was going to try to just bring you a couple of uh, of, of bad examples. Um, but I didn't succeed in finding the, the worst examples. Now, so, so maybe if, if some of you have examples of your favorite uh, of your favorite terrible errors in in user manuals, please bring them to class uh, and Wednesday and, and Friday, and I'll be and I'll be able to use them uh, this week or next week. But I I'm, I'm, I want to take up a collection here of uh, of really glaring errors in, in user manuals that you've seen. Now I have to report that I I I uh, I, I read. Um, the DBase 3 manual that my wife had a year ago, and I thought it was uh, pretty bad, and so I went back to her uh, shelf to get the manual so that I could Xerox some of the pages to show you how, how bad it was. But they had come up with DBase 3 Plus and the whole brand new manual, and I looked at the new manual, and actually that's probably the first computer manual for PC that I had ever seen that I thought was, was actually respectably done, and, and, uh, I, and I couldn't find uh, uh, anything to complain about. In fact, it looked like they had thought about that rather well in this in this second version. So uh, maybe I should even bring that in as a good example to show. But uh, um, uh, it was. Um, but but um, somehow bad examples are more fun. So so please bring in some bad examples for me to look at. Now. <clears throat> I wanted to make a few general comments here that the most uh, most of these manuals are written by somebody who thinks they're trying to write for the absolute novice. And uh, and that's a that's reasonably that I mean, that, that's a good thing to try. Um, and uh, uh, and there's and the only trouble is that, that it's usually accompanied by a paragraph that that uh, uh, that says that this is for the absolute novice, followed by another paragraph, which makes it absolutely clear that it's not. Um, and uh, here's, here's one that I got in the mail last week. Uh, this is a proposed manual for, me for PC Metafont, and it says it may, it is, I, I like this paragraph very much, it may at times seem in this manual as if we're belaboring a point or repeating ourselves needlessly. If so, please have patience, keep in mind that you may have a greater knowledge of or ability to learn about computer systems than some other users. However, we're help, attempting to help everyone discover the rewards and so on. So now, that sounds great. Now the next paragraph, though, says, <clears throat> for text listings, the, whether they're part of input file or an output file, the character something shall note the spot where an implied concatenated line exists. <laughs> the line following that with the concatenated symbol should be considered, it, it, it will be indented two character widths. Now, I don't understand what the heck the guy's talking about, and I wrote Metafont, and I, you know, okay. now, and uh, so finally, after seeing a whole a bunch of examples, it was clear that really the, the, this is much narrower. They wanted to show lines that are much that are narrower than their page. I mean, wider than their page, and so they wanted to show uh, that uh, something was act that's two lines in this book is actually one line in a file. But that's not what it says here. Um, uh, now the the uh, uh, let's see, time is about up, but I want to show you this anyway. Um, there's a book that came out last week, uh, and it's probably one of the best computer science books of the year. Probably the best. It's, uh, it's uh, by three people who read. Who uh, I mean, two of them are excellent writers, uh, um, and um, it's uh, it's about the awk language, which uh, the initials uh, A W K uh, is what what. Um, of the authors is what is what led to this uh, is what, le what led to this language and they they don't say in their preface but they they tried to write this manual so that it would be for uh, someone who has no experience with uh, with other with other programming languages and uh, and uh, now in the beginning of the uh, of the preface it um, so anyway this was the, and, and Al gave a copy of this to my wife so that she because it seems like Awk is really the system of choice for her with uh, kind of a, of work that, that she does on her PC. Um, and so, uh, 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 but w w when, when uh, Jill got to um, um, uh, the third paragraph, all of a sudden, here it was, um, um, or wait, when, when, where am I saying here? Um, she knows about regular expressions. She's, she's heard about that term actually before, but here she says, Zach, 
Act, the action language looks like C, but there are no declarations. Strings and numbers are built in data types. And all of a sudden, um, uh, now, now, every, now, of course, uh, the authors, uh, Aho, Kernhan, and Weinberger, wouldn't understand that, that Jill has just one word for declarations and data types, and that is gobbledygook. This sounds like gobbledygook as far as, as she doesn't know what any of this is. Any computer science knows this. Now, um, and so on the next page it says, uh, why is awk a good language? Because there are no declarations, because storage management is easy. It has the advantages of pseudocode. But they can be run, which is not true of pseudocode. And so, and then there's make programs and all these things. Now, you have to explain this to the, to some class of readers. But, but uh, there would be, you know, but this this completely turned off uh, uh, Jill, and she, while well, she still uh, is gamely going through the the examples in the book, and this book has, by the way, has more than a thousand examples of ARC programs in it, and each one has been tested and and run with ARC and actually types it by a computer so that they're correctly transcribed and everything. That's a very fine feature of it. Um, and, and I think it's a well-written book, even though it suffers from this problem. But, I wanted, but, but this is inherent, no matter what. If, 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 you, if you are a person who's been into, in a field for, for very long, you won't realize when you're using jargon. But, when you're trying to, but if, if you take as, your, as a goal to try to write for a novice user, you will at least be writing very clearly to the people who are like you. And this will, this will make your book very much more successful than if you tried to write for a high-level user, and then, then you would confuse everybody. So, so, so uh, I would say, it's, it, you know, even though you, you might uh, not be able to succeed because you just aren't a novice, uh, it's still worthwhile to try writing for the novice uh, because then you will, you will very well communicate with the experts and otherwise you communicate with nobody. So, okay.